Mr. Brex? Before you open your mouth, be very sure this is the right thing to do. I will never be sure. You get pissed at me because I'm always the one arguing to go ahead and do murder. Not this time, Earl. This is your decision. I know it's wrong. I know in my heart it's wrong. Then don't do it. Go with Mr. Smith and let him finish that. And let the police put Jane in jail. Hopefully that will save her. And we can happily go on with our tortured lives. That's exactly what I want to do. That's exactly what I should do. The thing is, she is my daughter. And I love her. Mr. Brex? I'm going home. Hello everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we're back again and here now we have another video for you in our unrated, underappreciated movie review series and in this edition we will focus on a psychological serial killer thriller, Mr. Brooks. Released on June 1st, 2007, it stars Kevin Costner, William Hurt, Demi Moore, Dane Cook and Daniel Panabaker and it was directed by Bruce A. Evans. Now the story of Mr. Brooks is that we are set in present day following successful businessman L. Brooks who seemingly has the perfect life. Now this perception changes when we see him break into an apartment and ruthlessly murder a young couple who were having sex at the time. We learn that Earl has a serious addiction to killing, having recently succumbed to it once again after a period of two years without doing so. He has several coping mechanisms such as attending regular alcohol anonymous group meetings, but the real facet of his coping is the constant presence of Marshall who Earl constantly confides in not only with his killing addiction but also within his life in general. Things get more complicated when a man known as Mr. Smith approaches Earl with photos of him at the young couple's room, giving proof that he is indeed the killer. But Mr. Smith doesn't want to blackmail Earl for this, he's actually excited by Earl's killings and wants to participate in the next murder. We also follow Detective Tracy Atwood, who's on the case of tracking down Earl, who's renowned as the thumbprint killer. We also see that she's involved in a divorce settlement with her ex-husband, who's demanding 1.5 million as Tracy has a large fortune of which her husband is trying to exploit her for. As a master of precision and control, Elle's life begins to come apart when his daughter becomes a suspect within a murder investigation. Elle starts to believe that his daughter may also have the same killing addiction that he has suffered with for many years now. Now Mr Brooks is a classy sophisticated psychological thriller that's also a fascinating and complex character study. There's plenty of intrigue and suspense and tension as the story progresses with a lot of twists and turns that are somewhat convenient but they also keep the story involved all the way through. This movie is well crafted and directed and moves along at a good pace with high quality performances from all of the cast. Now of course at the centre of all of this we have to talk about Kevin Costner who without question is one of the all time great leading actors and movie stars. He rose so prominently within the late 80s and early 90s playing idealistic heroes and crusaders from the likes of The Untouchables, JFK, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves and The Bodyguard. He also made many romanticised stories involving sports such as Bull Durham, Field of Dreams and Tin Cup as well. So it's absolutely sheer delight to see such a change of tone in what's his most darkest and sinister role, very much playing against type which I believe is one of the greatest qualities of any actor, but this character that he plays here isn't a raging psychopath, this is a very intelligent and scientific personality who is all about having control. And this makes things far more interesting as we see Earl lose his control and become far more stressed and it makes for such more of a compelling story when you have an intelligent villain who clearly acknowledges a sense of mental illness and their constant struggle to try and cure themselves from it. And it's that inner conflict that's where the film is truly at its strongest when we see Earl interact with his mental cipher in many ways in William Hurt who's equally as impressive as Marshall. In many ways Marshall is the sponsor of Earl constantly checking him in all of his reactions and directions and impulses, being brutally honest and decisive about what Elle should do and William Hurt who sadly passed away recently is even more cynical and ruthless but also clarified and defined in his overall directives. 
and the dynamic between him and Costner is absolutely fantastic and that's the real attraction of this movie and it's truly great performances from both in their roles. I also give major props to Demi Moore who's a very fierce and stern presence as Tracy. She actually gets a good amount of screen time here where she's involved in probably the two most action sequences of the entire movie. Her divorce backstory was an attempt to give her character far more depth. Whilst I'm not sure it's as significant within her story, it doesn't really harm the story either and I think Demi Moore handles herself very well painting a very convincing strong personality and she also looks great here within the film also. I also liked Dane Cook who did very well as Mr Smith who over the course of the story becomes far more impatient and erratic as Earl continues to stall on showing him the murders. It was also very good to see a very young Daniel Panabaker in a role here as Earl's daughter. She does fine in the limited screen time that she has and of course we all know she would go on to play Caitlin Snow in the long running superhero show The Flash. Now there are just a couple of flaws here that I have about the film and they're more nitpicks to be honest here. I think sometimes the action beats of the movie especially involving Tracy make it feel more like a typical crime actioner or a police procedural which totally feels a bit out of place with the far more psychological thriller that we set at the beginning of the film. I also questioned why Elle never wears a mask when committing the murders as you'd think someone who's so methodical would take greater precaution in concealing his identity and that's what gets him discovered in the first place. But despite these nitpicks they're not enough to derail from what is a finely accomplished and classy serial killer film. So if I had to give an overall score for Mr Brooks I would give it an 8.2 out of 10. And when we go on to look at the box office of the movie, it performed okay, I guess, grossing 48.1 million from a 20 million dollar budget. So it wasn't a big blockbuster at the time. And whilst Kevin Costner has always been respected, at this stage of his career, he wasn't really the massive box office draw that he used to be in the 90s. And we can also say the same for Demi Moore as well. And Mr. Brooks never gets mentioned when referencing Kevin Costner's acting performances or his filmography, which I think is a shame because it truly is one of his most impressive performances throughout his career, and it's so good when we see recognised actors taking a risk within their choices. So alongside other acting performances of a high calibre and a very dark, sinister and measured tone, all of these elements are for me what makes Mr. Brooks a very unrated and underappreciated movie many years after its overall release. So those are my overall thoughts and feelings and review of Mr. Brooks. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How do you think it compares to other movies within Kevin Costner's career? Do you think it's an outstanding entry or do you think it's something of a wrongful choice and you prefer to see Kevin Costner in the far more heroic roles that defined his superstar status throughout the 1990s? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any other choices of movies that you'd like to see me review within this channel, then drop me a suggestion within the comments and I will see if I could provide further commentary on that movie for you within the future. Please also hit and like those subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now, take care of yourselves, stay safe distances and I will see you very very soon.